Well, let's talk more about that Saskatchewan court decision and some of this week's other top political stories. I'm now joined in studio by three members of Parliament. Arif Rani is an Ontario Liberal MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. Rosemary Falk is a Saskatchewan Conservative MP. And Wayne Stetsky is a British Columbia MP and the party's critic for National Parks. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vranny, let's start with you and the Saskatchewan Court of Appeals decision. Uh, the court did issue a split decision, but it was in favour of your government's uh, plan for carbon pricing. What's your reaction? Well, this court decision is a very important statement about what we've been saying all along, that when you're talking about climate change and environmental matters, you're talking about not just national concerns, but international concerns. The notion that a sub-national government would take us to court over addressing what is clearly an international issue is puzzling to me on a common sense basis. What the court has clearly said is that it is constitutional in its entirety. No matter how you construe it, it is a national concern that needs to be addressed. And what we'd like to see is finally different previews of this country, including the Premier of Saskatchewan, getting on with spending taxpayers' dollars to address climate rather than challenging us in court. Well, Ms. Falk, you're from Saskatchewan, and we did hear uh, the Premier today suggest that he is going to see this through to the Supreme mm -hmm. Court of Canada. Uh, so what do you think, seeing this well, decision? Well, you know, uh, coming from Saskatchewan, I think what's very disappointing with the federal government and their decision to impose a carbon tax, because this, this definitely isn't an environmental plan, this is a tax plan. Uh, Saskatchewan already has innovative farmers, innovative industry that's already doing things with carbon capture and uh, zero, zero tillage farming. And uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to people in Saskatchewan not wanting to pay this tax, but willing uh, to be innovative in their fields of industry. Does the decision hurt your party's political message on this, though? Because you've been oh, arguing of not. about of the not. economic side of it as of, well? Of course not. I mean, I live in Saskatchewan. I talk to people in Saskatchewan every time that I'm home. People do not want to pay this tax. Uh, they feel, again, not consulted, not that they're being listened to. Uh, at the end of the day, this government is just choosing to impose their way or the highway, not listening to any other ideas and enforcing their tax plan. Mr. Seske, what's your view? You know, climate change is a national and an international issue. I'm not surprised by the decision. I think it was the right decision, but also I, I want to give people a sense of comfort. We've had a carbon tax in place for 11 years in British Columbia and the economy has done just fine. So you can have a carbon tax and a very solid economy. Mr. Verani, we know that uh, in your province uh, a similar process has been playing out in the courts and more challenges have been promised uh, in Manitoba, in New Brunswick uh, and in Alberta with the new Kenny government. Uh, are you expecting judges in those provinces to look at this any differently or, or are you hopeful that the same uh, reasoning that your government put forward in Saskatchewan uh, is going to hold up in these other provinces? Well we're very confident in our jurisdiction and the reason is basic. Air pollution and water pollution transfer over and traverse provincial borders. Ergo, it's a national matter. Ergo, the, provincial, the national government can step in. That's what this court has found. We're confident that the Ontario Court of Appeal will find it. And if Alberta's Premier wants to, again, waste taxpayers' dollars challenging us in court, so be it, we will likely win again. But what I can say is that it's, it, it's, it's actually a bit shocking that Rosemary has said that their political message doesn't need rejigging. What the court found is that, in fact, this is not a tax at all. A tax is money that you collect for general revenue purposes and spend how you, you will see fit. What the Conservative Party is doing is actively deceiving people about the fact there's a climate action rebate, which is as high as $600 per family for in her province, that they're not disclosing to Saskatchewan individuals, nor are they actually acknowledging. It is not a tax. It is a revenue neutral tool that will bring down greenhouse gas emissions and will address the welfare of the children and grandchildren and all of us sh whose welfare we should have in mind. That's the important factor here and that's clearly not sinking in which is actually quite alarming. Well, Ms. Uh, Ms. Falk, I know, I know I you want to jump disagree. in on that but, but I, <laughs> you know just taking on that, does the debate now go essentially back to the political sphere now because even if the Supreme Court looks at this uh, it probably won't well, say anything be, until after the election. This will but, definitely be an election issue, yeah. I, I, you know, I can tell you that. Um, uh, when Andrew Scheer is elected Prime Minister, he said he will revoke the carbon tax and I mean we've seen this again and again. Uh, Alberta, BC, Manitoba uh, it, it don't want the tax. The voters don't want the tax and uh, that's the mandate that they're giving the premiers they're electing. And I think that that's just something that maybe the federal government should listen to and want to work with instead of just bulldozing their 
one and only carbon tax. And plan. setting a minimal standard for greenhouse gas emissions caps is not bulldozing anyone. And listening to people is listening to them it's about returning to the voters, money though. to their to it's their not wallets. Listening to the voters. Returning money to their wallets is exactly what's happening. But people like Jamie Jamie Schmale don't disclose that the, when they send the out a the household. Well, I want to let Mr. Tax uh, Stetsky get in here on this. What do you think uh, about that? Well, you know, to say that voters in British Columbia aren't in favor of a carbon tax would suggest that they don't know that they've had a carbon tax for 11 years. And I think there's a message in that uh, all on its own. But I think Canadians need to be really concerned about where government is going in general. Uh, you know, $4.5 billion encouraging new pipelines does not fit very well with the idea of reducing GHG emissions in the long term. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done yet before we can reasonably say we're dealing appropriately with climate change. Well, let's talk about pipelines because that's certainly one of the other big stories in federal provincial relations uh, involving energy. And of course, the new Alberta Premier was on Parliament Hill yesterday to talk about the threat of even a national unity crisis if Bill C-69 goes forward uh, under its current form. Uh, you know, Mr. Verani, how do you counter what Jason Kenney is saying yesterday, saying that he's speaking on behalf of Albertans who feel that they're livelihoods are being threatened by this legislation. So what we would say is that Bill C-69 is an important step forward in terms of uh, retooling environmental assessments and how they happen going forward. We know that the problem with previous environmental assessments is that they didn't accommodate for environmental impacts, impacts on Indigenous communities or have robust consultation. So that's the first response. Second response is that, uh, is that Premier Kenny has been elected with a mandate from the people of Alberta. We respect that. The voice of the people is important to understand. What we're working on, apropos of what Wayne just mentioned, is pipelines, supporting pipelines, but doing it in a manner that balances the economic and the environmental concerns. And the way we do that is because the previous Premier of Alberta had put in place a cap on oil sands extraction emissions. And thankfully, Premier Kenny has not indicated he's going to tinker with that. It's those kinds of regulatory controls that allow you to pursue pipeline expansion, but still maintaining a cap on overall emissions uh, and that result from the oil sands extractions that allow you to achieve that balance. We know that the environment and the economy go ha hand in hand. What's troubling is that we've been waiting for over a year for the conservative environmental plan. And secondly, if you don't have an environmental plan, you can't embrace the new economy and all of the renewable energy. And so, Ms. Falk, how do, you, how do you respond to that? Because does, does Mr. Kenny's uh, message change the conversation when uh, your party's being accused of not having uh, a real um, detailed Climate Mr. change Shear, plan yet? Mr. Shear said that he will announce the plan by the end of June, so before the end of the session, uh, which is next month, right away. Uh, I think something to take into account is uh, Mr. Kenny has a, a very valid point. I live in Western Canada. Um, I, I my riding borders Alberta. Uh, people are angry, and people feel actually very uh, left out and uh, not consulted with, and and feel that this this federal government really doesn't care about their livelihoods. And that's speaking for oil and gas, but also farming and agriculture in regards to this carbon tax. Uh, you know, the, the people in Saskatchewan are super frustrated that there's just no incentive to for, for their livelihoods. Uh, it's just, this is the way we're going to do it. And I mean, we've We've been asking, when's this pipeline going to be built? The government's taken it upon themselves to spend $4.5 billion of taxpayers' money, which did not need to be used because there was private investment, but because they created this uncertainty of, uh, of regulation, uh, investors have left. And they've taken that, those Canadian tax dollars and invested them elsewhere in other countries well, like Mr. the Mr. Stetsky, I want to talk to you because you're, of course, approaching this issue from the BC perspective, mm -hmm. where there is opposition to the Trans Mountain Pipeline. And of course, the NDP government in your province is now in a court action against uh, the new Kenny government about Bill C-12 and the threat of uh, halt of, of oil and gas shipments to your province. So, you know, how do you see this playing out from your perspective on the Pacific Coast? So what's important certainly to British Columbians is the environment uh, consultation, appropriate consultation with First Nations, appropriate consultation with communities. And so we need an act that actually puts a lot of emphasis on all of that. And we also need to move away. There's estimates anywhere from 1.2 to as high as $1.8 billion worth of subsidies. We don't know for sure. The Environment Commissioner recently said that government doesn't know what those subsidies really are. But if you can imagine if we could take that money and put it towards uh, green energy and transitioning jobs appropriately, because we do need a transition period, we need to be using that money to start that transition to green energy. Okay, well, we'll leave the conversation there, but thanks to all three of you and have a great weekend. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you.